after the saccharine stories we've been reading for the last few weeks, I'm sure we're all relieved to be starting a much more bracing book, Kipling's Stalking Company. Of the writers we've read so far, Kipling is the one with the most prolific career. You might have read his Just So stories when you were little, or perhaps you've seen Disney's version of The Jungle Book. Kipling published many poems in, many, in major popular journals, important novels including Kim, and was generally beloved by child readers. The publication of Stalky and Company raised into high relief the different values of child readers and the adults who monitored their literary intake. Critics greeted the stories with opprobrium. One called it an unpleasant book about unpleasant boys at an unpleasant school, and another said a more odious picture of school life can seldom have been drawn. It's clear why they would think so. The stalky boys do not like wholesome entertainments such as sports. They delight in tricking and mistreating their masters and generally defying all the rules of gentlemanly behavior. Even their slangy talk was offensive to the fussy old fuddy-duddies who decried the book's probably ill effects on child readers. Of course, those same child readers loved the books for precisely those reasons. Here were boys who talked like real boys and who were not preaching moral values at kids all the time. Kipling was born in India, a civil servant for his father. At age four, he was sent to England to live with a stranger who ran a business of providing a home for children from India. The people he lived with were cruel and unloving, and Kipling was miserable there. In fact, the first time he found happiness in England was when he began attending the United Services College when he was 11. United Services College was a school set up to prepare boys for entrance to the military and navy academies in Britain, Sandhurst, and the Royal Naval College at Dartmouth. The headmaster, Cormorell Price, had been the head of the modern side at Haleybury, a more prestigious school in Hertfordshire. United Services College eventually became Imperial Services College and later folded into Haleybury, which is still in operation. Cormell Price was a family friend of the Kiplings. Rudyard grew up calling him Uncle Corm, and so the family sent him to USC when he was old enough. The call was a strange choice for young Rudyard. He was very nearsighted and wore thick glasses, earning him the nickname Giggers at school, short for gig lamps. He preferred literary activities to military ones, and his eyesight ruled out a career in the military anyway. But Uncle Corm gave the boy the run of his library and some guidance on writing, so Kipling did well enough there. The stalky stories began as occasional magazine reminiscences when Kipling was already an established writer in the late 19th century. The first story to be published, Slaves of the Lamp Part One, appeared in April 1897 in Cosmopolis magazine, followed one month later by Slaves of the Lamp Part Two. Essentially, the magazine asked a famous writer whose books were beloved by children and adults to compose his own version of Tom Brown's school days. What they got was quite different. Eventually, Kipling wrote and placed the stories in a variety of magazines, then gathered them together in 1924 in the book form you have before you now. Many of the stories are troubling in one way or another, but I'm sure you also notice that the writing is deft and lively. It's easy to understand why child readers, particularly adolescent boys, found this book much more to their taste than something like Eric or even Tom Brown. And you can see the connection to the cruder and more action-oriented style of school stories, such as those in The Magnet. Stalky is a good text for thinking about style. In terms of its morality, Stalky is probably at the opposite extreme from Eric, but the same thing could be said about style. Kipling attends carefully to the ways boys talk to one another, and he captures the authentic speech of schoolboys in Stalky. Farrar, by contrast, won't replicate schoolboy speech because he doesn't want to teach readers bad language, meaning, in this case, slang, as if boys learn slang from novels. Some features of schoolboy slang include dog Latin, a name for a corrupted form of Latin mixed with English that was common among schoolboys because so much of their schooling involves studying Latin, and local words specific to a particular body of schoolboys. That might pose a bit of a challenge to modern readers, but remember that readers in Kipling's time, unless they had attended United Services College, also would not have been familiar with the local slang. Like you, 
they would have figured out the slang from context clues. Unlike you, they didn't have handy notes in the back of the book. Colloquial language is one element of Kipling's style in Stalky. What else can you say about his style? You can contemplate that and how style supports the content of Stalky in the forum this week.